QuickTime events, or QTEs, get a bad rap, usually because they're shoehorned into games to give a false sense of interactivity, or because they're actually way more fun to fail than they are to get right. Just occasionally, though, a QuickTime event will come along that will justify the entire concept of QTEs by being clever, innovative, or just so impossibly badass that we'll give it a pass because we're too busy being impressed to be mad about it. Here are seven of our favorites. Enjoy! Zanyu Barber's Shop This must be Zanyu's shop. In Shenmue 2, Ryo Hazuki is trying to avenge his father's murder, which, for some reason, he can only do with the help of Li Xiaotao, a kung fu master who will only help Ryo once Ryo has mastered the Four Wudu. Great! Which might take a while at the rate we're going. The Wudu are kung fu principles that teach one the correct way to live your life and practice martial arts, and they involve punching trees and, crucially, not freaking out when someone is waving a cutthroat razor in your face. That particular Wudu is tested when you head to an in-game barbershop run by a martial arts master, and this being Shenmue, the test takes the form of a QTE, because freaking everything in Shenmue takes the form of a QTE. Yes, thank you. The point is, a few hours into Shenmue 2, you are well and truly trained to expect QTEs, which is why it's such a clever reversal when you reach a point where you have to completely ignore a QTE to succeed. I'll trim your hair while I tell you. What happens is that this wild-eyed barber, who claims to be a martial arts master, tells you to not move no matter what happens while he brandishes a straight razor uncomfortably close to your neck. Those without the voodoo often strayed from the path and were hated by others. Those people were often killed when they were off guard. There then follows the longest few seconds of your life as the A button prompt flashes on screen, beeping incessantly, and you try to ignore it against every single instinct the game has instilled in you up to this point. Man, I'm not even playing right now, I'm just looking at video footage and I'm still trying to press A on an imaginary controller. Well played, Shenmue 2. You challenge me, mortal? A god of Olympus? A true warrior does not hide, Poseidon! Leave the sea and face me! You have disrespected the gods for the last time, Kratos! Ah! Long before the excellent Hades made us think of the Gods of Olympus as a close-knit community of adorable, sexy frenemies, the God of War series was making us horribly maim them with QTEs because Kratos has absolutely zero chill. Maybe just talk to them, Kratos. You can hang out and chat about boons. Oh, there's no talking to him when he gets like this. For our money, though, the most disgustingly creative God of War QTE comes during a gruelling battle against the God of the Ocean, Poseidon. No matter how many gods fall, there will always be another to stand against you. They will fall as well. Towards the end of the fight, the game asks you to nail a series of QTEs in order to wail on Poseidon's skull and face and face bones, and you have to watch it from Poseidon's point of view, because the makers of God of War are just sadists, I guess. It gets worse, though, because this is all leading up to Kratos grabbing Poseidon's head in his hands, at which point you're asked to click in both L3 and R3, which, if you can't guess what that's going to do, just mime that button press for yourself, then watch this. Gross, yes, but that's a spot-on QTE for the situation. I think we can all agree. Well, maybe not Poseidon. Doesn't look like he's a fan. World War I, this is National Tower. Warwolf acknowledges. What is your status? I have a flight emergency. Request immediate clearance to land. You are clear to land. Ace Combat Assault Horizon isn't really known for its QTEs on account of how it is a flight combat sim with only one QTE in the entire game. That being said, however, it definitely should be known for its QTE, singular, because as you're about to see, it's fantastic. The QTE in question comes right at the very end of the game as your character lands safely back at base, still looking like a forensic clay reconstruction made from handsome Squidward's skull. First you have to hit Y to look at your love interest, which is just there to make sure that your Y-pressing finger is nice and warmed up as you turn to the gathered crowd who are desperate for a sign, some kind of instruction on how to feel. That's when the game asks you to press Y again, 
What for, you ask? Why to raise your fist triumphantly into the air, of course. There is actually a way to fail this QTE, where your pilot just stares at his fist for ages, which the crowd still cheers, but in a slightly more subdued way. Good, but I think it'd be even better if it had a proper fail state, where your hero pilot character flips everyone off if you accidentally pressed X instead. Just a note, Ace Combat devs. Something for next time. Resident Evil 4 was a much more action-oriented entry in the long-running survival horror franchise, a fact that quickly became apparent to fans five minutes into the game when a man with a chainsaw was trying to cut non-threatening dreamboat protagonist Leon Kennedy's head off. Chainsaw. That action focus extended to QTEs as well, with several quick-time events throughout the game that demanded your total focus and quick reflexes if you were to avoid building up a stack of dead Kennedys. <laughs> By far the best example, however, and one of the best QTE sequences in any game, comes later on in Resident Evil 4, when Leon squares off against scarred-up Jarhead Krauser in a deadly, deadly knife fight. Krauser? I died in a crash two years ago. Is that what they told you? Unlike a regular knife fight, which I imagine are over in about four seconds, this is one of those knife fights where the participants circle around, explain plans, fill each other in on backstory, and occasionally, when they remember, lunge at each other with the length of sharpened metal they have in their hands. What this sequence does so well, though, is making you feel like you're part of the action. It's almost unbearably tense as you watch the scene poised, waiting for the QTEs to pop up, and give you half a second to react so that you don't end up with 12 inches of steel lodged in your chest. Ada! Ada, please! I had things under control. He was right where I wanted him, honestly. The Yakuza series of over-the-top crime sims knows what it's doing when it comes to QTEs, using them for such standout moments as answering a telephone, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. mush, mush. and stealing someone else's energy drink mid-fight. Later games in the series also added QTEs into significant fights, letting you finish them off with a QTE sequence referred to in-game as Feel the Heat. These are all exceptionally awesome, but even so, none of them come close to the one in Yakuza 5 in which you punch out a man-eating grizzly bear. We don't really have time here to get into why you're fighting a bear, but here you are in what would normally be considered a pretty one-sided contest. This is a Yakuza game, however, and all Yakuza protagonists are supernaturally good at punching things, which is why, when you chip the bear's health down enough, you are invited to mash the square button to punch its lights out with a single blow. which is A, awesome, and B, certainly a better use of the heat gauge than using it to cheat at air hockey. Can't even handle a fall from the heavens. You lack training! Marcus! 
We couldn't make a list about the coolest QTEs of all time and not include Asura's Wrath, the story-based beat-em-up from Capcom that is essentially Cool QTEs the game. Asura's Wrath is full of spectacular QTEs that reward you with incredible carnage just for pressing the right button at the right time. But our personal favourites have to be the ones found at the end of Asura's fight against his mentor Orgus, who is like Asura but beardier, with fewer arms and more giant swords. To be fair, he is doing something about that arm advantage. This being Asura's Wrath, things take a turn for the cosmically over the top as the fighters head into space and then crash back down to Earth, with August pinning Asura to the ground with his giant sword. At this point, Asura finally decides he's had enough and shatters August's sword with his last two remaining arms, which would already be enough to qualify this as an incredible QTE. What puts it over the top and into the legendary category, however, is what happens next where you, the player, rotate the left stick and Asura, the playable character, grabs August's sword with his teeth and almost cuts him in half with it. Damn, Azura, we make a great team. 50 50 effort there, I'd say. We can't let Shepard escape! In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Lieutenant General Shepard is the important senior officer who still finds the time to personally watch you run the training assault course at the start of the game, and who you get in a lot of trouble for shooting if you get bored. Friendly fire will not be tolerated? Tell that to Shepard, who is also, it turns out, the main villain of the game and who kills one of the characters you're playing as and then sets them on fire with his bad guy cigar. As such, by the time you reach the end of the game, you're itching to take Shepard down a peg or two. Three, even. That's how much we want to see this guy get his comeuppance. <laughs> Admittedly, this final confrontation doesn't start well in that Shepard stabs you in the chest with a massive knife. Luckily, he doesn't manage to finish you off thanks to the intervention of Captain Price, which leaves you free to quicktime him to death. You see, Shepard forgot one crucial thing. He left you with a deadly weapon, namely that massive knife sticking out of your chest. Oh, what's that? It's definitely lodged in some important organ, and pulling it out will only make things worse and probably kill you. This is Call of Duty, folks. Realism got 360 no-scoped, like, four games ago. So follows this triumphant QTE where you mash X to pull the knife out of your own chest before aiming and letting loose with a flamboyant one-handed throw that leaves you with the deadest shepherd I've seen since the start of Mass Effect 2. That's for setting me on fire earlier. Plus, you know, the war crimes. So there you go, those were seven QTEs so cool they basically justified the existence of QuickTime events. Did we miss your favourite? Drop your suggestion in the comments, and for more videos like this, subscribe to Outside Xbox. Even better, hit the bell icon on the bottom right of the screen to get a notification when we've got a new video. Thanks for watching!